All right. So I spent a brief period of time in Toulouse in France in the Department of Mathematics soon after I graduated. Now, let me give you an example. It has nothing to do with biosciences, and please don't get intimidated by the, by the, the mathematics here because it's not important for this case. So in 22, approximately, in the city of Toulouse, there's a chemical factory that exploded and contaminated the whole city. And then the military and policymakers then went to the Department of Mathematics, and then they asked those modelers how we can prevent the same scenario from happening again. We need a numerical modeling tools that allows us to, in real time, simulate critical events like anthrax bombs or contaminant dispersion at a point source really so quickly that you have enough time to provide evacuation policy. So this is supposedly in seconds domain, all right? This is a trivial task and it has direct relationship with policy. Now, if you look at the bottom figure, that's the city of Toulouse in the airport area. If you take a look at the red colored and green colored cubes, these are the buildings and trees and some objects. If you extract that out of the pictures, what you see is something akin to a porous media. Now, the problem here is that the length and width or even depth of the city is of kilometer length scale. And those who do modeling knows that if you have the smallest object in that computational domain being sub-meter scale, you have problem with multi-scale uh, numerical problems, right? Because the grid has to entail so much mesh points that makes real-time simulation virtually or prohibitively difficult to do. You could do this with current architecture of computer, but it would take hours, if not weeks, to do that, even the most advanced one at the scale of a city. And then so, so that's the thing that I tried to figure out. And then we created this multi-scale finite element models, and those who are perhaps more proficient in mathematics know what I'm talking about. And then we simulate it in such a fashion that the simulation can take seconds rather than hours with some degree of accuracy. All right, so that's not the point of my talk today because this has direct relationship with sustainable development goal, in particular, number 11, sustainable cities and communities. And this, like I said, is an interdisciplinary endeavor. This is the city of Bogor, and which I took the figure from OpenStreetMap and then at the bottom is a selected objects in the city, trees and buildings. As you can tell, trees are carbon sinks, right? And then some of the, some of the pollutants include transportation vehicles, etc. And then so we apply these models, and then in order to understand the kind of policy that could promote the plantations of trees, etc., you need to understand the difference it would make uh, with or without it. And so long story short, Although you cannot see the red colored here, you could tell the difference in seconds. All right.